والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وإنما تعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's the only one worthy of praise I seek his help, his guidance and his forgiveness I believe in him and I trust him I seek refuge on Almighty Allah from the evil of our passions. Indeed, whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides him to Al-Islam, no one can mislead him after Allah. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him astray, no one can guide him after Allah. I testify openly that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah Rabbil Alameen. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and the seal of all the prophets. O Muslims, you must know that the best speech is the speech of Almighty Allah, which is the Quran. The best guidance is the course of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is his sunnah. The worst of all affairs is innovation, an addition to the religion of Islam. Indeed, every addition to the religion of Islam will lead to hellfire. I adjure you as well as myself to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the best of your ability, fear Allah, have the taqwa of Allah, and don't die unless you are in a state of Al-Islam. After this, I greet you all with the greeting of Al-Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty Allah be with you all. I'd like to welcome you all for continuing reading from the book Riyadh al-Salihin, Garden of the Righteousness, by Imam al-Nawawi, rahmatullahi alayhi. May Allah send mercy in his soul. Ameen. And today we have the chapter number 248, which related to Babu Zikri in the Sabahi Wal Masa, remembrance of Allah uh, in the morning and in the evening. And again, I would like to remind you that remembrance of Allah, anything which related to the dua or zikr in the morning and the evening, that too said after Salat al Fajr. And the evening is to say it after Salat al-Asr, not after Salat al-Maghrib. So let's keep this in mind and look now to this hadith which reported by Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him. Hadith 1452. قال جاء رجل إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله ما لقيت من عقرب لدغتني البارحة قال أما لو قلت حين أمسيت أعوذ بكلمات الله التامة من شر ما خلق لم تضرك رواه مسلم This man came complaining to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying O oh Messenger of Allah What a trouble I suffer from a scorpion which stung me last night The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told him 
Had you said in the evening, أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق, which is a meaning, is I seek the protection of Allah with the perfect words and the complete words of Allah from everything he had created. It would not have harmed you. So the Prophet telling him, the man is complaining about what harm had happened to him because he'd been stung by a scorpion. The Prophet sallallahu told him, if you said this dua by the evening, you got stung with no harm happened to you. Or maybe even you are not going to be stung totally. Okay? It can be understood both ways. What do you say? Say, أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق. أعوذ, I seek protection. I seek refuge. بكلمات الله. Seek refuge in Allah's words. The most perfect one. The complete, the perfect words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The perfect one. From the evil of everything that he had created. So now, seeking refuge have to be in Allah. So you have a person who seek refuge. You have one that you seek refuge in. And you have a seeking refuge from what? So you asking Allah to protect you from the evil of everything. And the evil of everything that he had created. What are you saying? He's saying, I seek refuge in Allah, the perfect words, in Allah's perfect words. So, kalimat illahi tamat is not makhluqat, is not created thing. Okay? Because the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is His words, is not created. Alright? So, because you are not supposed to seek refuge in any creation, you only seek refuge in the Creator. Qul a'uzu bi rabbin nas. Malik in Nas, Ilah in Nas. So if you seek protection, refuge in Allah. So by saying, A'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tamat, you are seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is His words, is not His creation. No, you know in saying, A'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tamat. So the words of Allah are perfect and complete and just. And fear. From what? From the evil of everything that he has created. In everything that Allah had created, it can be an evil. But the one can protect you from that evil is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now we see the importance of remembering Allah in the morning and the evening. And how this can benefit us in the life even before the hereafter. Because the Prophet ﷺ told him, if he said so, that evening, this is scorpion, this is tongue, that tongue is not going to harm you. So this is very important dua to say in the evening and in the morning and for you to say it. Let's say it together a couple of times. أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق again أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق one time more أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق حديث 1457 reported by عثمان ابن عفان may Allah be pleased with him قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من عبد يقول في صباح كل يوم ومساء كل ليلة بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم ثلاث مرات إلا لم يضره شيء رواه أبو داود نريتت عثمان بن عفان مي الله بيبليز وزهم ذا ذا مسنجر اوف الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سين هي ورسائت ثري تايمز Every morning and evening. Bismillahi alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi. Shay'un fil ardi wa la fil sama' 
وهو السميع العليم that mean in the name of Allah with whose name there is no protection against every kind of harm in the earth or in the heaven and he is the all hearing all knowing in the name of Allah with he, whose name there is no there is, there is protection there is protection against every kind of harm in the earth and the heaven and he is all hearing all knowing he says it three times but again you have to say it in what in arabic bismillah in the name of allah alladhi who la yadurru nothing can harm with his name, ma'asmihi, with his name, shay'un, anything, in the heaven, fi sama, wala fil ard, in the earth, wa huwa, and he is, as sami' the all hearing, all seeing. So, we have to learn this dua. Say it three times. In the morning, and in the evening. It will be a protection for you. It will be insurance against all harm. This is the real insurance, that the insurance that you sign contract with Allah. Not this insurance that people, false insurance, take your money and after this you are not getting too much out of them. If something happened to you, all what they can give you can give you some money. They could not give you anything else, okay? Or whole thing is nothing but money, okay? But you put insurance with Allah by saying what? Bismillah al-Ladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fi al-sama' wa huwa al-sami'u al-alim He said in the morning three times and in the evening three times will be a protection for you. Another hadith, which hadith number 1456 and this by Abdullah ibn Habib or ibn Khubayb that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, اقرأ قل هو الله أحد والمعوذتين حين تمسي وحين تصبح ثلاث مرات تكفيك من كل شيء. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abdullah ibn Khubayb, recite the three calls, recite the three calls, three times in the evening, three times in the morning, and this will be what? will be sufficient for you from everything. Ikhlas, falak, and nas. Three times. Let's go for a break, and inshallah we'll continue after this. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalam ala rasulillah. Welcome back, and we're still talking about the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, uh, we had mentioned before the break about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa advising us to recite ikhlas, falak, and nas three times. In the morning, as well as the evening. That means you will read, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفْوًا أَحَدْ قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس 
من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس. This will be one. This is one set. He repeated again for the second time, and he repeated again for the third time. And this he said after Salat al-Fajr. This will be a protection for you until the evening. After Asr, he repeat again, Ikhlas, Falaq, Al-Nas. This is one. Ikhlas, Falaq, Al-Nas. This will be the second set. Ikhlas, Falaq, Al-Nas. And this will be the third set. And this will be protection which he takes you from the evening, from after Salat Al-Asr until Salat Al-Fajr. So Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this beautiful religion that teaching us how we can be protected. And by saying these three surahs, inshallah, by the will of Allah, trusting in Allah, this will be sufficient for you from everything. You don't have to worry about anything. Say it in the evening, in the morning, and you go about your day, and you don't have to worry about anything. Let's go to another uh, subtitle, inshallah, which is, Chapter Babu Ma Yaquulu Hu'inda Nawm. This chapter number 249, that supplication before going to bed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لُؤُلِ الْأَلْبَابِ الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهُ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And this is Surah number 3, verse 190 and 191. Verily in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and in the alternation of the night and the day, there are indeed signs for those men of understanding. Those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, standing, sitting and laying down on their sides and think deeply about the creation of the heaven and the earth. This verse is related here because we're talking about remembrance of Allah when you go to sleep. That means it is permissible for you to remember Allah, to say Quran, to say Azkar while you are laying down. Because some Muslims, they feel... Like this is like a disrespect. How I can be laying down and reading Quran? Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it for you. Made the religion symbol for you. And Allah had praised those who remember him in all occasions. And one of them while what? While they are in their beds. Leaning. Okay? Or laying. Leaning or laying down. How hadith number 1458. عن حذيفة وأبي ذر رضي الله عنهما كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا آوى إلى, آوى إلى فراشه قال باسمك اللهم أحيا وأموت ذات حذيفة عند أبو ذر مي الله بيبليز بالزين بوث they said that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to supplicate when he went to bed at night باسمك اللهم أحيا وأموت بسمك اللهم أحيا وأموت With your name, O oh Allah, I expire and return to life. Okay? بسمك, that means with Allah's name. اللهم, O oh Allah, أحيا, that I be living, and أموت, that I die. So you have to understand that everything is by Allah, for Allah, by the ability of Allah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's look to hadith number 1459, still under the same subtitle number 249, what you're supposed to say when you go to sleep. And this is a, what you call uh, a prescription. What I mean by this, prescription. This for those people who work very hard. I'm sure all of us work very hard. But some people, they exert more energy than others. And some people work over time. And some people, they uh, work, uh, bodily work more. And they, by the time they come home, they say, go to sleep, lay down the bed. In matter of a second, they're gone. They're tired. 
So I'm giving you something from the pharmacy of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It will help you a lot, and I'm not going to charge you for this one. Okay? This will be free for watching, only because you're watching Qanat al Huda. Okay? And because you listen to this class, we're going to give you this medicine will help you. You know when the battery get weak and you recharge it and now you're ready to put it in the camera or whatever and work again. So when you go so tired and sick and you could not take it anymore, now you do this, what I'm going to tell you, and you will benefit a lot with this. This hadith 1459 وعن علي رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال له ولفاطمة رضي الله عنها إذا أويتما إلى فراشكما فكبر ثلاثا وثلاثين وسبح ثلاثا وثلاثين وحمد ثلاثا ثلاثا وثلاثين In other narration say أربعا وثلاثين In actuality uh, this hadith is a part of a story uh, the Prophet sallallahu had some captives that he got in the war. So when Ali radiallahu an, his son-in-law and his cousin heard about it, because Fatima, may Allah be pleased with her, she used to work hard. And Ali also used to work very hard. And I want my sisters, especially my sisters, to listen to this. Because nowadays we get in with this women lib and liberation and women movements and all kind of stuff. And people say, does a woman have to cook for her husband? Does she have to clean? All kind of, it's too much sometimes. Look, the story happens that Ali and Fatima, both of them work hard. He work outside, she work inside in the house. So when they heard about those slaves, they had been gone, uh, been uh, captives in the, uh, in the war. They said, let's go to the Prophet wasallam, ask him. Maybe he will give us one slave that can assist us to make the chores and things in the house. So they went to the Prophet and say, Oh Prophet of Allah, we work hard and things like this, so can we have a slave to help us? The Prophet didn't give them a slave, he didn't say too much to them. Why Allah knows best? But Alhamdulillah, because if he gives them, we are not going to get this gift today, all right? But what happens, the Prophet ﷺ didn't give them, but later on he went to visit them in the house. And they approached them and told them, when you go to your bed, this is the hadith, he said, when you go to, to bed, say, subhanallah, 33, say, alhamdulillah, 33, say, allahu akbar, 33. In another narration, say what? Say, allahu akbar, 34. So the total will be a hundred. And say, فَذَلِكُمْ خَيْرُ لَكُمَا مِنْ خَادِمْ This will be much better for you than having somebody to serve you and to work for you. I want you to go and do this. When you go to sleep at night and you're tired, cleaning the house. I know my sister, you work hard. Cleaning the house, changing diapers, cooking the food. And you, my brother, I know also you work hard, especially if you are in renovations and buildings and things like this. When you go to sleep, take a moment and say, Subhanallah, 33. Alhamdulillah, 33. Allahu Akbar, 34. And see what's going to happen to you when you wake up in the morning. You will be like a br brand new person. You'll be ready to go and start a new day with no problem. Why? Because this is the prescription the Prophet ﷺ had given it to his son-in-law, his cousin, and his daughter. So inshallah, let's benefit from the dhikr. Let's benefit from, the, this is the beauty of the sunnah. It given us all these fruits and all these benefits that we can benefit and get the good of it in this life even before the hereafter. And also there is another hadith here about remembering Allah before you go to sleep. And reported by Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. And Aisha radiallahu anha, and Rasulullah sallam, kana idha akhadha maja'ahu, 
نفث في يديه وقرأ بالمعوذات ومسح بهما جسده متفق عليه and in another narration is saying إذا أوى إلى فراش كل ليلة جمع كفيه ثم نفث فيهما فقرأ فيهما قل هو الله أحد قل أعوذ برب الفلق قل أعوذ برب الناس ثم مسح بهما ما استطاع من جسده يبدأ بهما على رأسه ووجهه وما أقبل من جسده يفعل ذلك ثلاث مرات يا ريت عائشة مي الله ببليز وزيرز as the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم before he go to bed he will gather his two hands together and he will blow in them and blowing is not maybe the proper translation because there is nafkh and there is nafs and there is tafl okay so the nafs is <coughs> like this with a little bit of saliva okay and he will recite qul huwa allahu ahad qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas and after this he will wipe over his face head front back everything that he will reach and he will repeat this again for the second time qul huwa allahu ahad and qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas wipe face head. everything all the way back and front for the third time let's inshallah practice this get the blessing of following the sunnah of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and get the blessing of remembering Allah before we go to sleep. With this, I leave you today. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Muhammad Saad Adli, from Columbia, South Carolina. Until I see you again, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us on his sunnah and on the remembrance of Allah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. And Allah knows best. Mm-hmm.